It's one of the world's largest aviation and space exhibitions. Dubbed Technofest, the expo showcases Turkey's latest military hardware and aviation technology. And at this year's event, the country's brightest minds were also on hand to talk about the next great innovations. The six-day event had Turkey's latest drones on show, along with its first homegrown multifunctional helicopter. But it wasn't just military hardware on display. Everything from electric vehicles, biotechnology and flying cars were giving visitors a hint at what the near future could hold. Organizers said the biggest goal of Technofest was to inspire the next generation of inventors and to get name recognition for Turkey's most promising startups. Every year, hundreds of thousands of students vie for a spot at Technofest in hopes of getting their ideas and inventions to the public. And organizers hope that the expo's growing popularity will help reverse a brain drain that has affected Turkey for years. To discuss Turkey's tech prospects, joining me now from Ankara is Arda Mevlutolu. He is a defense analyst who specializes in aerospace and military technology. And from Bursa, Turkey, Halit Mirahmetolu. He is the general manager at the Gokmen Space and Aviation Training Center. Thank you very much for being with us today. Halit, Technofest is now the biggest aviation and space festival in the world. In its first year in 2018, as many as 4,000 teams applied uh, to join this year, as many as 40,000. First of all, how, how did it go? It was perfect once again. It's impossible to not excite that. Uh, if you watch so you can hear that engine voice. Uh, Technofest is not only an event from this point of view, which brings thousands of people together. It's also a kind of celebration through the year. Uh, in here in Bursa, Turkey, we could uh, observe UAV competitions and over uh, 300 uh, teams competing here. There are model satellites competitions, rocket competitions in the in Tuzgöl in Salt Lake. And uh, I mean, Turkish youth get, could get its motivation and inspiration uh, towards the high technology once again. As Guham, uh, we were in, uh, in a part of this biggest celebration in Istanbul, and it was really amazing to, to see such a uh, public interest. <laughs> it sounds really fun. And Arda, one of the main um, goals of Technofest is to inspire Turkey's youth to produce the next big thing in a way. Um, first of all, how is the startup ecosystem in Turkey? Uh, it can be said that the startup ecosystem is directly tied to the ecosystem of several major uh, powerhouse industries, such as automotive, uh, such as consumer goods and electronics. And uh, lately, for the past two decades, uh, defense and aerospace sector. The advancements in this defense and airspace sector, uh, many indigenous development and manufacturing projects, they also act as a stimulus for uh, startups to enter uh, the industry uh, through, uh, through several, uh, several enterprises uh, that take form uh, within uh, techno parks uh, through the collaboration of universities and industry. Uh, several subject matter expert startup companies have recently uh, flourished throughout the country and uh, that, uh, that drive is mostly a product of the recent developments in the airspace sector because of Turkey's uh, motivation and ambition in uh, achieving self-sufficiency in defense and airspace industries. Right, and uh, Halit, uh, Turkey has the largest youth population in the EU area, and in the last decade, the government strongly supported uh, the startup environment. At the same time, we've really seen institutional investments coming from angel investors, from venture capital, literally surging. Uh, do you expect investments to grow further? And why is the world and uh, foreign investors, uh, you know, why are they investing? Why are they looking at Turkey's startups? Well, we have to invest even more and they have to invest even more. Institutional and angels are investing especially to value added high technologies. Uh, we can see investments in gaming industry and recently we see investments in company offering ultra fast deliveries around the world. So unicorns are needed to change the current game. Uh, via these new initiatives, 
we can open up new markets and provide more uh, added value products. Turkey has a young population, as we always say, and a quick decision and action kind of uh, ecosystem. I truly believe these are uh, what current investors are uh, looking for around the world. Right, and Halit, uh, one of the main focuses of the of Technofest as well is the defense technology industry. How does this industry stand uh, right now? How big of a player is it now? Well, uh, as everyone said, Turkey should be a leading and model country in the field of indigenous and uh, national production. Uh, by supporting the design plus uh, developing activities and creating industrial uh, structure. In recent years, our defense industry has proven it's, uh, uh, it's capable of manufacturing a ver variety of sophisticated weapons systems, um, ending its dependency on uh, foreign sources and multi uh, suppliers for its uh, military projects will take more time, but however, uh, it is clear that the number of uh, Turkey's export products increase each year. Right. Arda, um, I want to talk also about arms exports uh, more in, in general. Between 2015 and, and 2020, the volume of Turkey's arms exports grew by 86% and Turkey became the 13th largest arms exporter in the world. I mean, how much uh, room for growth is there in terms of becoming, you know, making it as one of the top 10 arms exporters in, in the world, and is there anything hampering this growth? Uh, very good question. Uh, as you mentioned, there is a significant growth in terms of exports between 2015 and 2020, and uh, until very recently, the, uh, the, the, the uh, breakdown of Turkish defense exports, uh, if you look at that breakdown, uh, we mostly see uh, several products and platforms uh, that are not as sophisticated as, let's say, a warship or a drone or an electronic uh, warfare system or a communications system. So, uh, so far, Turkey has exported mainly armored vehicles, uh, infantry equipment, uh, handguns, and less sophisticated products and goods. But uh, since a couple of years, we, we observed that Turkey has started exporting uh, much more sophisticated, complicated uh, platforms and products, such as armed drones, as in the case of uh, Bayraktar and Anka drones to various countries. Uh, we have seen Turkey exporting warships, complex warships, uh, to Pakistan, to Ukraine. Uh, Turkey uh, getting uh, submarine upgrade contract from Pakistan and several uh, different uh, types of guided and unguided missile systems, uh, sophisticated electronic warfare and communication systems and sensors. So uh, Turkey needs to increase the, uh, increase the percentage of uh, such uh, sophisticated platforms in its export portfolio. And in order to fully achieve this, uh, Turkey needs to increase uh, the local content of uh, critical subsystems first and foremost engine and propulsion systems, followed by sensors and uh, critical electronic components. Right, Arda Halit, also want to ask you, uh, he's, uh, Arda was speaking about the drones. Uh, in fact, Turkey is one of the top three uh, countries in the world for, uh, in combat drone technology. Why do certain countries prefer to buy Turkish-made drones? Well, in, in uh, open market, customers search for uh, cheaper and quality products. Uh, if you can afford a product, but uh, they don't let you buy it, you should search for another alternative. So Turkey opened up a new chapter by producing its own drone technology. And uh, that's why, I mean, uh, that's a new alternative. And that's some from some point of view, it's a better alternative. Uh, that's why some countries are looking uh, forward to cooperate with Turkey and to buy our products uh, and to uh, enrich its cooperation. Right. Arda, um, the so-called brain drain still has an impact uh, on um, Turkish companies in, in general. Uh, they struggle to retain talent. Do you think um, Technofest and also similar platforms could be somewhat of an incentive uh, for Turkey to retain but also draw back its nationals from abroad? Partly, because Technofest and similar organizations 
are mostly important uh, to inspire and motivate the young generation to uh, focus their energies, brain power, and studies on uh, advanced technologies such as defense and airspace uh, technologies, autonomous systems, artificial intelligence, and such. So, in, in order to direct, in order to motivate the young generation into such uh, areas to uh, stimulate their creative power, stimulate their uh, ambitions in those sectors, Technofest and similar organizations are extremely important and uh, they are very, very of utmost importance. But in order to retain experienced uh, manpower, experienced human resource capital, uh, we need to take extra measures to, to, to uh, sustain, to protect those experienced uh, people uh, inside the country, to lead those young generations uh, to fulfill uh, challenging projects such as uh, national combat aircraft, such as different types of satellites and other advanced technology uh, systems. So just, uh, just uh, motivating and inspiring the young generation alone uh, is part of uh, the, the task and the other half of the challenge is to protect that experienced uh, human resource capital inside the country. Brilliant, Arda, uh, Arda Halit. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you very much.